And well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I am Watts UK99. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. So what I want to do today is talk a little bit of Jets Eagles. The Jets have their first preseason game Friday night against Philadelphia. The Jets actually have beaten the Eagles in their history. It's just because they play each other in the preseason every year. So what I want to do is talk about a couple of players that I'm going to be paying attention to. Now, Coach Sala has already made it clear that the Jets starters are going to play one to two series. He's even said if Zach Wilson takes the team down the field on that first drive, that's probably going to be it for the first team offense. So I'm not focusing too much on the Garrett Wilsons or, or you know Zach Wilson guys like that. I want to talk about a couple of players who are in position battles or trying to get keep their, get their spots on the roster, trying to earn their spots right now that I think are going to play at least half the game that are going to bear some watching. So I am going to talk about Mike White for a moment for one reason. I still question if this team is going to carry three quarterbacks. White will be the third quarterback. Joe Flacco has looked very good. It's already known he is going to play the second part of this game. Wilson gets his one or two drives, then in comes Joe Flacco. So at some point, they'll put Mike White in. And I wonder, if there's a quarterback injury somewhere in the league, is some team interested in possibly trading for Mike White? There's still a lot of teams that have very unsettled quarterback uh, situations. And, you know, it's funny. I was reading an article on ESPN talking about certain luxuries that certain teams have. And who has the best luxury situation? And this was things like fifth wide receiver, uh, run-stopping defensive tackle, like just exclusively a run-stuffer. You know, positions like that. Fourth safety. One of them was third quarterback, and they declared Mike White is the best third quarterback in the league. So, yeah, we're the best at something. So that's something to be positive about. Take that to the bank, I guess. But I wonder if White plays well, if that could get a little bit of interest going. Because I don't think Mike White is going to be with the Jets a year from now. And if he's not going to be here in a year, then why not tr try to get some kind of an asset? And where you have a lot of other positions that have good depth now, you know, defensive line, wide receiver, and so on, maybe you take the risk of only keeping two quarterbacks on your roster. So maybe Mike White would get traded and his performance in these preseason games could have something to do with that. Number two, Max Mitchell. Uh, and I'm going to throw Chuma Adoga sort of in on this, but we already know what Adoga kind of is a marginal, probably at best, tackle in this league who needs to do something or he's going to be on his way out of the league. But Max Mitchell is a uh, Jets fourth-round pick, very raw prospect, had great production in college, very well-respected, third-team All-American. But is he ready to start? After the injury to Mekhi Becton, I'm sure if the Jets could just plug and play Max Mitchell right into that starting lineup, they would love it. However, what kind of an adjustment will it be? Is this a redshirt year for Max Mitchell? Or do they have to go outside the organization to get a Dwayne Brown, to get an Eric Fisher, to get a Brian Balaga, to get a Brandon Shell, to get a Daryl Williams, to trade for a Tevin Jenkins from Chicago? This is uh, something that is going to bear a lot of watching. What is that pressure going to be like coming from the outside on the Jets quarterbacks? Max Mitchell is going to have a lot to say about it. Number three is Denzel Mims. There's a battle for a fifth receiver on this team. At this point, if Denzel Mims can't beat out Jeff Smith, what are we talking about here? You know, I have been as defensive of the 2020 draft class as I could possibly be, but it's, it is getting more and more challenging to do that now. And Denzel Mims, I don't expect him to get a ton of opportunities over the course of the regular season, but in this game, he should be getting a lot of playing time, particularly in the second, third, and fourth quarters. Probably the second and third quarter, I would think, more than anything. So if he can't take advantage of those opportunities against the Philadelphia backups, how much can we expect him to do once the games are actually, you know, the regular season is underway? So he's number three. Number four, Jamie and Sherwood. I am very intrigued by him. I feel like he is a very forgotten linebacker. He's had some injury issues, uh, but he seems to be recovering from his torn Achilles. Keep in mind... He tore that Achilles, I believe it was game five last season, but he was not even on the pup list this year. So that tells me he's ready to go. I really believe 
going by the Jets depth chart, they are grooming him to be C.J. Mosley's replacement next season. He's a hard hitter. I want him to be the organizer. I want him to be the brains of this defense. I'm going to be watching Javian Sherwood. I want to see what kind of production he has in this game. Number five is going to be Jason Pinnock. Now, Jason Pinnock is being viewed very differently by a lot of Jets experts, by a lot of Jets media, and by a lot of Jets fans. You have some people who are wanting him to be the starter, who are anointing him as the starter over LaMarcus Joyner. They're doing that based off two games last season that he started because Pinnock was a cornerback up until the last two to three games last season. If he's ready to do that, great. But you have other people, you know, well-respected writers, like on Jets X Factor, who aren't even projecting Jason Pinnock to make the 53-man roster. They're looking at the safeties on this team as LaMarcus Joyner, Jordan Whitehead, Ashton Davis, and either a Will, probably Will Parks, who's had a very productive training camp. I like Will Parks. I would keep Will Parks over Ashton Davis myself. So what is Jason Pinnock? How much playing time will he get in this game? Will he start? Will LaMarcus Joyner start? You know, will it be a situation where the Jets ro rotate in different safeties, you know, next to Jordan Whitehead, depending on the situation? So what is Pinnock this season? That is going to be a, a pretty big deal because if he can fulfill that starting safety role over the course of the season, that's one less uh, hole to plug in next season. So that would uh, that would be a big weight off the Jets' shoulders, and it will make Jeff Ulbricht's life that much easier. So that's what I got for you right now. I'm excited uh, for this first game. I'll do my best to figure out a way to watch it. I know, worst case, I can watch it 6 a.m. on uh, the next morning on NFL Network. But um, but until then, I'll be back here with more content. It's going to be back in the wicker chair, <laughs> and I'll be back with more soon. Have a great day, everybody.